We've been busy cleaning the beach and helping the seabirds. Come help us. Save our seabirds! I'm totally up for getting involved, but if I want to help the seabirds, I've got to take to the sea. North Berwick in Scotland is home to some amazing wildlife. Finn, come Finn, right next to the boat. And I'm off to a place where 150,000 seabirds live. Bass Rock. It's so white, it looks like it's covered in snow. But those are actually all birds, which is mind-blowing. The birds covering Bass Rock are called gannets. And there's one person who's been taking care of these birds for nearly 20 years. Meet Maggie. Maggie, I've got to say, this is spectacular. Why have the birds actually chosen to live here? What do they love so much about this environment? They've been here for centuries. They like the sheer cliffs, and also they've got good fishing out here off the North Sea. If you've got food and somewhere nice to live, perfect. Happy birds. Except they do face a few issues, don't they? They do indeed. One of the worst things we see is entanglement. When they get caught in fishing line or something, if it gets caught round their bill, they can't feed. If it gets caught into their nest, their chick maybe gets entangled and sadly it will just die. So these are things we've got to really look out for. <gasps> litter! Litter! <laughs> that was a bit... That was get it! I'm going to have to go and get it. <laughs> got it. She's got it. There are no people living on Bass Rock, so all of the litter has been washed ashore by the sea. Oh, yeah, the rope. I hadn't even seen that. That's what they get caught in. There's oh, rope yeah. here. Oh, you don't notice how much there is, do you, until you actually start yeah. looking for oh, it. No. In the last five minutes, I've pulled a plastic straw out of a gannet's nest, a sweetie wrapper and a piece of rope out of another one. When we don't bin it, this is where it ends up. The work doesn't end there. Potentially harmful rubbish isn't just found in the nest, it can be found all over the island, which is shocking considering humans don't live here. Oh, my goodness. Crisp packet, crisp packet. Another wrapper here. Look how old that is. It's really disintegrating. So has that been here for years and years, then? Probably years, yes. Yeah. It's shocking how, in just this space, since we walked up those stairs, we filled a bucket with plastic rubbish. It's actually pretty upsetting to see this much on an island like this, which is just yes. home to over 150,000 150, birds. birds yes. And they're having to live amongst this rubbish that we've put here. Beach cleans are, in some areas, paying off. There's no question. And I think we see this very much here in North Berwick. Mm. It's made an immense difference. And when you get high tides, any rubbish that's on the beach, mm. it just gets swept back out. We're still getting high tides, but we're not seeing as much rubbish floating in the seas. See, slowly, slowly, we are making a difference. There is a point going out to a beach. There is a point picking up litter. There is a point putting stuff in the bin. As you can see, protecting our seabirds is a big job. But thankfully, Maggie isn't working alone. I'm heading back to shore to meet these eco-warriors who are hunting tiny plastics known as nurdles, which are really dangerous to our coastal wildlife. Billions of these nurdles are used each year to make nearly all our plastic products, but many end up washing up on our beaches. Ada, explain to me, because I've never seen one. What is a nurdle? Well, all these little plastic bits in this jar are nurdles. Some of them can be, like, small beads. Oh, I can see. And why are they really bad news for our beaches and our coasts? Well, um, some of them can be toxic and if, say, like a seabird ate one of them, then it could die from the toxin in it. So they really are bad news for our coasts, aren't they? The Wildlife Club are not just searching for these tiny balls of plastic, they're recording everything too. I think we've got six. So far. And the problem with the nurdles is that they're teeny tiny, aren't they? And you don't exactly know if they're a tiny bit of plastic or not. Giles, are those nurdles? Yeah. yeah, they are. Right, let's mark them down. Two nurdles. The data we're collecting is vital when it comes to monitoring the amount of plastic on our coast. Why is it really important that we come and clean up our beaches? This is the only plant 
planet we have. There isn't another planet over there, like, floating there with no humans on it. You know what, if I've learned anything from this trip, it's that just a tiny, tiny bit of plastic can have a devastating impact. But as these guys are showing you, they're getting out there, they're making a huge difference, and you can do that too. You could even earn one of these. Hey guys, it's Adam. Make sure you subscribe to the Blue Peter channel, like this video, check out our playlists, and if you want to watch more Blue Peter content, then head over to the BBC iPlayer.